Well, you may have heard about a little bit about the country of Yemen over the past few years, maybe just sporadically. It's definitely not on the front pages of your newspapers because, you know, uh, again, those are not places that the uh, Western media likes to cover. They like to cover Ukraine and those stories. Uh, those places are held for China, Ukraine, Russia stories, but not for stories out of Yemen. But for the last seven years, the United States and NATO allies, along with our good friends in Saudi Arabia, have been utterly destroying the country of Yemen with nonstop bombing campaigns. And, you know, presidents pay lip service to wanting to end the war in Yemen. They want to stop all of this bombing. President Biden did that as well. He called it the endless war or the, I don't know, the forever war. He wanted to end this. But instead, we ramp things up. So here's how the cradle.co lays out a bit of the history on this. It says Yemen descended into chaos in March 2015 when Saudi Arabia and its regional allies, with the backing of the U.S. and other NATO states, launched a brutal war that sought to oust the popular Ansarallah resistance movement from power. Right. So that's a bit of the history. And Saudi Arabia continues to, uh, f you know, continues to attack in this region. Um, but we've got a new report out today on specifically the number of children that have been killed as a result of this conflict, because it seems to me, at least in the West, when children are hurt, children are attacked, that someone starts to pay attention. There's a, like a, a glimmer of hope that maybe if we have some statistics on children, that we can actually end this war. But this new report on children is absolutely troubling. So here's how uh, this new report lays it out from the United Nations. Let's put this up on the screen. Here's what it says. It says, according to Oxfam, the Saudi-led coalition bombed more than 200 medical facilities between March of 2015 and August of 2020. Last October, UNICEF revealed that at least 10,000 Yemeni children had been killed or maimed since the start of the Riyadh war in 2015. A total of 11 million children are also in dire need of humanitarian assistance, with 400,000 suffering from severe acute malnutrition. <sighs> Awful. And so we had heard from the United States that, well, what President Biden was going to do specifically, of course, was end this, you know, end these forever wars and pull back on that. Of course, that is until the Russia conflict started. And that is, of course, until we need to rely on West, uh, Saudi oil. And we need this relationship with Saudi Arabia because we clearly can't get our oil from Russia and we don't want to do it necessarily from Venezuela. So we definitely need to shore up our relationship with Saudi Arabia. Now, President Biden, the Biden administration are flying to Riyadh to meet with Saudi leaders. Now, that has actually put, been put on delay. We got word today that it's actually going to be delayed until July. But nonetheless, it's still happening. And I think it's it's they're they're waiting to send him until maybe people aren't paying much attention during the summer and everyone's on vacation and then he will fly to Saudi Arabia. So he's going to fly to Saudi Arabia. And you, of course, you remember President Trump flying to Saudi Arabia and that whole big pomp and circumstance yes. where they did the dancing sword ceremony and everything. So, again, these are the guys that bombed us on 9-11. OK, overwhelming number of the terrorists that attacked us on 9-11 came from Saudi Arabia. And President Biden, when he was running, said this that he was going to, of course, make Saudi Arabia a pariah. Uh, that's not happening. So as the Washington Post points out, it doesn't appear that that's going to be happening anytime soon. Not while we need them on and Friday. oil. No, on Friday, Biden delivered remarks on the strong jobs report from May and faced questions about the upcoming trip. He declined to confirm it. I have no direct plans at the moment. And then he just tried to change the subject. I've been engaged in trying to work with how we can bring more uh, stability and peace in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, sure you are. And there's a possibility that it'd be going to meet both, both the Israelis and the Arabs. Some Arab countries uh, at the time, including, I would expect, would be Saudi Arabia to be included in that if I did go. If I did go. Right. So you're going there to shore up a Saudi oil deal. At the same time, our relationship with Saudi Arabia continues to attack Yemen and destroying that country and killing children. I mean, yes. that's just what's happening on a daily basis there. Well, that same report also talks about how over 23 million Yemenis have been displaced and are dependent on humanitarian aid to survive. So, you know, while we think about how we can mobilize to support displaced Ukrainians, you have to remember that when you move those Ukrainians to the top of the line, it means they really don't wait in line the same way that these Yemenis do who are in refugee camps in uh, places all over the world, right? Economies that are being destroyed because they are trying to support already massive amounts 
of refugees. Um, and so is it right then to move these people to the back of the line when they've been suffering since 2015? There was a great podcast I was listening to, This American Life, just last week, and it was about refugee camps in Mexico. Um, I, I was just within the last two or three episodes, if you look for, seek out this, this American Life podcast, and they were talking, they went to refugee camps for Ukrainians in Baja, California, so Tijuana, mm -hmm. right? And they saw that these refugee camps, they were processing Ukrainian refugees into the United States in eight to 12 hours, maximum 24 hours, right? And inside of these refugee camps, the children had all new clothes, crayons, coloring books, strollers, beds, hot food, all kinds of things, which is wonderful to provide to any refugees, right? But then the reporter went up the road to the refugee camps that housed Latin people, either from Mexico or other Latin American countries. And these people, in a space of a year, only one person in this camp had been processed into the United States and had waited months for that to happen. They had absolutely no crayons. They had no food. They had to actually go out into the town and use their own money if they needed anything. No hot food, nothing like that, right? And so you have to think about the people that get pushed to the back of the line when you support one group over another. And it's a heart, it's a gut-wrenching thing to say because I hate to say that there are not one that any one group is not suffering. Uh, but when you think about these people who will then wait longer because there's a sexier group to support, right? I think it's really important when you do things like that and when you support things like that to think of who else is going to suffer. And you look at the images that we're showing you of these children who are harmed, right? And then you think about Ukrainian children who actually arrive safely where they're going with warm clothes and backpacks full of snacks. And is there a way? I don't know what it is, but is there a better way to well, not prioritize way. people? Well, maybe not prioritizing people, but here's a better way. Just, uh, you, you, you know, we, we end these wars. So President Biden was pressed on this question during this press conference. But that's outside of our control, right? What is inside of our control what, is like... I mean, a president not... Ha he has the power to go over to Saudi Arabia. At this moment, that's outside of our control. I was having just a parent coffee the other day, and they were talking... To, like, these moms were sort of congratulating themselves about how fast we were able to mobilize support for Ukrainians who came into this region. And I was like, that's wonderful. But who doesn't get our support because we jumped to to these refugees who had like weeks between being displaced and getting help right and how then do we mobilize for people who are waiting years between displacement and any support right and so like uh, the, so for us, there's no patting on ourselves on the back for what we can do for Ukraine. And if we're not doing things for other, if, if, if our support pushes more needy people to starve more. So I'm, you know, at this point, yes. Okay. We can be pissed off about our leaders and launch a polemic against them, which we do all the time on this show. But what can we do right now? Well, we're up against, the problem is we're up against an absolute information machine. So when you have all of the Western media breathlessly covering Ukraine, leading their newscasts, covering it nightly about what's happening there, paying no attention to Yemen, no coverage. Like if you turn on the Ethiopia, si Nigeria, right, Syria. Yeah, if you turn on the absolutely. six o'clock news and you see Lester Holt on NBC News or whatever, and uh, the top story might be Ukraine, then it might be China, and then it might be updates on gun control in the United States. And there's no mention of Yemen. There's not going to be any mention of Somalia. Oh, by the way, the U.S. just sent troops to Somalia. There's not going to be any coverage of that. It's not going to be covered. It's going to be on the front page of CNN, all of Ukraine. So we're up against this, um, you know, an intelligence machine that's nearly impossible to crack. And we have organizations, of course, that you can donate to and help. But it really comes down to these leaders. It's, it's a demand from our Western leaders to press them on this. And I mean, I do like that at this, this press conference, they were asked, you know, hey, um, I'm going to change my I'm not going to change my view on human rights, President Biden said. But as the president of the United States, my job is to bring peace if I can peace if I can. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Yeah. You know what you could do? You could fly to Saudi Arabia and you say we end this conflict in Yemen right now. You and I, we sit down and um, we, we end this thing right now as the head of Saudi Arabia and the, the head of the United States. We can do that. We can absolutely do that. Sure. And if he's really about peace, he can do that. He can do that with a phone call. He can do that. He doesn't need to get on a plane and go to Riyadh to meet with these leaders. 
That's what they can do. And we can demand more from these people who continue to, we're going to talk about AOC a little bit later in the show, who, you know, on the one hand runs on being anti-war and anti-oligarchy, and then on the other hand votes for $40 billion to be sent into a war zone, supporting the military industrial complex. So we can be better about the leaders that we put in place. And that's one thing that we can do in addition to maybe starting our own organization to try to get money to to Yemen and Somalia and all of these different conflicts. Sure, zones. sure. And so, I mean, one thing that we try to do, you know, is not say don't support Ukraine, but to say if you do that, then please continue to support people who have been waiting for even longer. Right. Um, our hearts should not sort of stop around what CNN tells us to care about. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.